Ericsson was founded in 1876 by a young Swedish engineer, Lars Magnus Ericsson, who believed that communication was a basic human need and should be available for all. We've been innovating what communication means since then, and today we deliver the benefits of connectivity and communication to billions of people around the world. Our industry has a key role to play in climate action. Ericsson has researched for over two decades and understands that our sector is responsible for 1.4% of global emissions, while can enable a 10 times effect, 15% reduction of global emissions. Ericsson's approach to sustainability focuses on our own operations, our portfolio and services delivered, as well as our impact on society. Companies like Ericsson, who are right at the frontier of the digital revolution and the digital highway in the world, are truly part of the solution. For us as a company and for the wider of the industry, in the next couple of years, we really need to implement 5G as fast as possible. It's the most energy efficient standard ever and the more traffic that we can use in 5G the more energy we can save. 5G is fantastic in the way that you can send a lot of data in a short term and then you put equipment to sleep mode and in that way that's usually important for us and for our customers to develop all of these functionalities and features. So utilizing 5G as well as utilizing ICT technology to drive change in the whole world that is the way for a more sustainable future. Ericsson Supplies Italian is one of Ericsson's own factories. We work very closely together with Ericsson Product Design in uh, prototyping and industrialization of new products, which we then transfer to volume production, either in our own site or anywhere uh, globally. We are on a mission to transform a traditional hardware-centric volume production factory into a modern data and simulations and prediction-based software organization. The augmented reality gives us the energy efficiency uh, as the troubleshooters don't have to use so many different instruments and equipment anymore. They can focus on the one mobile device or headset in hand. We are now able to monitor the work environment in different locations in real time, gather the data and show historical statistics about that. The main benefit of implementing autonomous mobile robots in uh, private networks is to increase the safety uh, to reduce any incidents or accidents. All of these use cases help to reduce our carbon footprint and also to make our processes more efficient. The Exponential Roadmap is a really fantastic project where we join academia and civil society together with companies because we have the same vision of driving climate action. The Exponential Roadmap is taking on the grand challenge to try to answer the question, can we actually have a transformation across different sectors in society that aligns with science? The first thing science says is that, yes, we're following a dangerous trajectory, but the window is still open. We can still transform the world. So the journey that we're facing is actually a transformative exponential journey. With current existing technologies, if you add them up together, we can actually cut emissions by half in sector after sectors. Yeah, so what we find in the Exponential Roadmap report is that the whole uh, digital industry in the world where Ericsson is at the frontier plays a fundamental role in enabling these exponential roadmaps to, to be delivered. Digital technology is a game changer because it is the difference between a one and a half degree and a three degree planet. Digital technology can really help us drive an exponential change in lots of different sectors of industry. So in sector by sector we find in our estimates that to cut emissions by half over the coming decade. So up to one third of that cutting by half may be enabled 
through companies like Ericsson, through the digital highways that are provided, which can give energy efficiencies and novel technologies to enable these reductions in emissions. Ericsson has this opportunity of, of you know, framing the whole business model around sustainability. But we now need to set science-based targets for the whole planet. We need to now basically have innovation, exponential innovation, to occur within the safe operating space of planetary boundaries. Fundamentally, companies like Ericsson are connected quite deep into the fabric of modern societies. So I think it's a, it's a great opportunity and I would argue a responsibility.